Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Eddie here at Eddie Makes Art, and today I'm gonna show you how to make one of these. These are my ATC wallets that I've upgraded or kind of just like, yeah, improved a little bit because now I have a sewing machine. So I made this one with stitching all around and I've stitched all the compartments um, instead of using glue. Um, so let me show you. I did some embossing on this, it's not the best, but that's part of what we're gonna do today is uh, some embossing. This is how it opens. It holds three ATCs, which usually if you do a swap, you'd swap three. We're using gel print brayer offs or gel, just gel prints to decorate the inside in here. And then this is the little flap. And then we use gel prints again to decorate the back panels. And then I did some uh, embossing on the back. You can see that's a, some flowers. That's supposed to be a rose, but I kind of messed that one up. It looks more like a weird puppet on a stick. Then this one is a butterfly. And you get your bird here, but I, I kind of cut off the face a little bit. That's That came out pretty good, and so did the flowers. Now, these are, um, if you've been watching my channel, you've seen me use these stamps before. These are one-word stamps that come on um, a wooden block, so they're, you know, uh, the rubber stamp, and I've embossed those, these, these three lovely words. And then I found stickers that kind of match each one. So I put those there on the background. What you can also do is you can add another gel print here um, for the background. Um, you know, there's there's different ways to do it. Uh, and then here I've got some tickets that my friend Maya made and sent me. So I put one in this little pocket here. And you, you can take this uh, corner out before you stitch it up and just, you know, have this as a flat panel, but I said, why not? we got an extra little pocket there. Throw something cute in there. Now, these are made to fit a typical business envelope. So you can mail it like this, and you don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be bulky mail. You have to send, you know, with packages. It can be just sent in um, the regular mail with a regular stamp. Now, this and I'm just using um, a cardstock here. I believe this is 65 pound uh, from the Astro Brights group. I want to say it's 65 pound, pretty sure. Um, this is one of the last ones I made. One of the, you know, actually one of the, in the first group that I made. Um, and this one is going to a friend of mine. And I have decorated the inside with colorful gel prints. And then the backs, I've got um, this black and white scrapbook paper put in there and then the back is simple and then it's got a space to write in there so when the friend receives it they can write oh you know i received this from you know eddie on a so-and-so day ah, la 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 anything like that and then i put an eyelet in here with some ribbon and that way they can tie it up once they get it but when they once they open it but when it is being mailed it's pretty much gonna be flat like this. So you can get it into a regular uh, mailbox. Let me see if I can find an envelope. Let's see, I got a bunch of different envelopes here just from old bills and stuff. That way I can tell you the size of envelope you can use. Now I know there's a certain one, this should fit. I think I'm just doing it really badly. There we go. So that'll go like that. And this envelope is the ruler. Ba -da 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 -da. Nine and a half by four. So this is a business size envelope. That's what you want. So you can um, sh mail these nice and flat and they will work in um, your regular mailbox. Just put a first class stamp on it and you're ready to go. So the first thing I want to go over is some measurements. Um, I will do a little uh, write up of the measurements in the description box so you can get it all. Um, there's a lot of little ones, but once you do it once you kind of, you get into the flow of, of cutting it. Um, and so we'll start there and I'm gonna need my, What's that thing called? 
cutting scoreboard, this thing. So, what I did was I took this um, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, cardstock, and then I trimmed it down. So I'm gonna trim this to five and a half inches. There, five and a half. Yep. Yep. This piece left over. Save that for something else. So you've got your your basic rectangle here, and then we're going to get this ready to score. And this is a bit of a challenge for me as far as scoring on using this board because you notice my scoring lines only go to six and one eighth. But trust me, I'll make it work. Now, so this is what it looks like scored. So this is the first score you're gonna make, um, and that will create your pocket, and this is at one and a half inches. This should be one and a half inches, yeah? It's a little off there, because I think I did it this way. Yeah, so I did it at four. So if you do it this way, you're left-handed, and you do everything backwards like me, just score it at four inches. It doesn't matter, or one and a half. So we're gonna stick with the one and a half. Okay, so when you fold that up and crease it, that's, those are gonna be your pockets. And then we'll do these lines next. So we are doing, we're scoring at three inches first. And then an eighth plus. So three and one eighth is the next one. Okay, and then after that, we're gonna go to six and one eighth. All right, and I need six and a quarter, but that's not gonna happen on this board. So I'm just gonna bring it over one eighth. Do another eighth over here. So your next score is going to be at nine and a quarter. However, since I don't have a large board, I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to start on this end. Now I know the measurement of the shorter panel that becomes your flap. That's going to be, you want to come in one and five eighths. So that one is right there. Go to the next eighth, which is the three quarter mark here, one and three quarter. And then you have it. And like I was saying before, you can cut this square out. Um, actually, right, you wanna cut it here at this first score mark, cut it out there, and then you just have your flaps. Um, not gonna worry about that. That's not gonna be a big deal. Um, I, I kind of like the little pocket in there, which is cool. Uh, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just score it um, and, or crease it now that it's scored. Okay, so nice and creased. Everything looks good so far. So what I did with the on the sewing machine is I stitched right in the middle of that 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 um, that spine, and it held really well. So I think the next thing we're gonna do is should we ink it or not? I didn't ink that last one because I was just trying to just do something simple. Um, but let's see. No, I'm gonna use the ground espresso. Why not? Let's be, uh, let's be bold and wild. Right. It's gonna be pointing out so this gets inked. Just gotta keep in mind what's getting folded up what's going to be visible uh, so you don't waste your time inking things that don't need inking. Because, you know, nobody likes to waste their time. So 
So is everyone excited for the new year and what's to come? Can you sense the thrill in my voice? I, don't know. I think it's going to be a good year for me personally. Um, you know, I always hope that. I always hope for the best and deal with the reality, which is not always the best, but you know, such is life. I know it deals a bad deals you a bad hand. You accept it. And you do your best. That's all you can do. Let's see, you should do the do the insights here real quick. Ba -ba -ba -da. And I don't don't really uh, do the resolution thing because life is always changing. Things are always changing. So, you know, for me, it's my main resolution usually my only resolution is just be kind to everybody that's it it's simple but it's more effective than you think this is gonna look cool It is a rainy, miserable day here again. Honestly, you know, I would rather have snow than these like raw, rainy days. I don't like that. It's very mood destabilizing. <laughs> okay, so let's do the back. Or the front, however you look at it, I don't know. But they're going to get decorated and they're going to look really cool. Pick out a gel print um, to put in here. But let me clean up. I'm going to get my sewing machine and we'll do a little sewy sew. All right, so we're ready to sew, and I'm just going to stitch along the middle of this um, spine, okay? And then I'm going to do this edge, too. So let's uh, get going. Okie dokie, I think this is ready to go. I've got everything nicely stitched up. I'm just going to give it a little trim and then we'll pick out a gel print to put on here. Okay, so I went ahead and I picked out a couple of papers that I thought would um, work really well. And these are from my, um, my last video, actually. And this was a cleanup sheet. And whatever was left, I just put it on here. And, and if it was, you know, stuck on the gel plate, I picked it up with this. And so I got this really, really awesome looking paper. I hope you can see that gold down there. Um, oh, I know what, what else I did. I took some uh, distress sprays and just filled in the white areas using, um, you know, I sprayed and then I sponged and got it all filled in. This was another print from that session. It was originally kind of more like a lighter green gray up here and then a darker almost steel gray down here. I gave it a couple of um, layers of paint. I think it was um, Viridian Green. 
and then some yellow, primary yellow, I believe it was. And so it brought it to this, but it, you can see it still has that really cool texture to it and some gold on there. So we're gonna use that. So I'm thinking we'll use this for the outside and then this for the insides. So that would be there. Now, I do have the measurements pretty much down for the insides, and, or the panels, I should say. So for our large panels, these are each three and three quarter inches. You need to cut your, your print to three and three quarter inches by two and three quarter inches. So three and three quarter inches long by two and three quarter inches wide. You need three of those. And then you need the strip right here. And that strip is gonna be one and three eighths inches wide by three and three quarter inches tall. One and three eighths by three and three quarters. And then for the inside ones, we've got our three little pockets here. These are one and three eighths tall by two and three quarters long. So you need three of those. And then this one right here is just a square. It's one and three eighths by one and three eighths. That should fit well in there based on all the measuring I've done. Um, so let's start cut cutting. Speaking is hard. Let me get my cutter back up here. Okay, so for the outside panels, again, we want um, three and three quarter inches by two and three quarter inches. Let's see. So I'm gonna say this is my three and three quarter inch. I'm gonna do my length this way. And times three, do -do 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 -do. That's 11.25 inches. So we're not gonna get it out of this paper because this is only, this is actually just under 11. Let's see, kind of shrunk a little bit, I think. That's just under 11. Um, so I'm going to cut these to the three and three quarter inches, and then we'll have uh, enough to make two halves. If you know what I'm saying, you'll see what I'm you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll smell what I'm stepping in. Make sure your paper's nice and straight. I even replaced my blade on here last night because it was when it cut, it left little little jaggedy bits on the edge, and it was really driving me up the wall. And I was like, "Duh, change your blade." So I changed my blade after it took me an hour to find where I put them um, securely, so it you know they wouldn't get destroyed <laughs> that don't go uh, you put stuff away you try to be organized and you completely forget where it went okay. so we have these two so we're gonna cut this turn this uh, same side um, the next cut is gonna be two and three quarters so now the length is three and three quarters, right? Your length is three and three quarters. So two and three quarters wide. Here we are. And that should be the measurement for the back. Fits in really good there. Now on the other one, I rounded the corners. You can do that. You can leave them as squares, whatever you wanna do. So we got one, two, three. Let me finish cutting these. just a little bit bigger so we're gonna trim some of this so is it three and three quarter two and three quarters okay 
All right, so we divided that sheet basically. How did we do this? Okay, so we got three. The back, and then we need the skinny boy. And that's gonna be uh, one and three eighths by three and three quarters. So this piece is three and three quarters, and we just need uh, one and one eighth. One and three eighths, I apologize. One and three eighths. There we go, got those. Now let's cut the ones for the inside. So for the inside, you don't need that much. You need three pieces plus the square, three rectangles plus the square. I'm just gonna trim this up a little bit so I can get right to the meat of it. <laughs> right into the meat of it. So as far as depth, how tall are these, the tall? Do, 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 do. One and three eighths by two and three quarters wide. So let's say, let's trim this here. We are one and three eighths. And then you want two and three quarters width. Right there. Okay. So Pay attention to how I cut that because you see, I still get a good portion and I didn't have to chop it up of my print. I didn't have to, you know, destroy it. This one, um, obviously a little different because the pieces are larger, but I still have two great working pieces here. Okay. And then we need the square, which I think this little piece will work because we want one and three eighths. By one and three eighths. By one and three eighths. Uh, one and a quarter. Nope. Is that gonna fit though? I think we can make it fit. Yeah, that's gonna work. That is going to work. Perfect. All right. Now to get this out of the way, and then I want to ink on the edges. Okay, I got them all inked up. And the main reason I did these, you really can't see it on the front, but I wanted to get rid of that white edge from where it's been cut. Okay, now, um, when I did this other one last night, I actually glued down the pieces first, then I decided I wanted to emboss it. Now that I know how the process went with embossing it, the prints while they're on um, the book already, or the wallet. Um, I think it's gonna be easier if I do it individually. So, I'm going to start with the three, three small ones. That's the baby one. And let's just pick out three stamps here. Okay, I'm gonna pick out three stamps. I've got my word stamps. You guys have seen me use these before. Um, so, 
let's see. Journey. That's a good one. I haven't I didn't use that one. Forever. And how about Imagine? And then we need a little one for here. Do I have any small foam? A foam stamp I could put there. Well. Oh, you know what? What if we did one of these? That would be cool. Maybe the smaller one? Yeah, we'll do the smaller one there. Okay. And I'm gonna use for my um, ink, it's Versamark Watermark Stamp Pad. Now, that's not like dirty or whatever because it's old. It's because it does, you know, it's a white pad and absorbs stuff that's left over on your um, stamp, but it doesn't affect the performance whatsoever. Um, and then I have a selection of powders everywhere. Anything from clear and white. This is a uh, frosted crystal, opaque, bright white. I have a platinum here. Cranberry. Black, blue, copper. Gold, silver. Pale, um, a little pale green, a yellow. Let's play around. How about we use this uh, opaque bright white? I think that would be good. And should we mix it with anything? What if we mix it with some silver? No, let's mix it with some of this gold here. Yeah, it's all an experiment, right? So let's set you two over here. And we'll just work with one at a time. So you don't need a, a ton of this stuff on there. You see how shiny that is? You got plenty. Plenty on there. So just take your time, line it up as best you can. All right, you can't see it, but it's on there. The, um, the ink, the embossing ink. Put those there so nothing blows away. So let's sprinkle some of this white. And then some of this gold. We'll see what sticks. You see how the excess is just hanging out there? I take a little paintbrush and wipe off as much as I can. Otherwise, that's going to melt on there um, and you're not gonna like it. It's just gonna look weird. So take your time. Now the reason this is like sticking like this is because this paper is has that texture to it, right? From when we gel printed it. So you want to make sure that um, you brush away all that stuff that's just hanging out in the textures of the paper. Boy, oh boy! It, it this is a process, but you know what? The results are great. And, you know, it's um, very satisfying. And then while I also have these, these little like mini wooden um, swabs, cotton swabs. And these are great for just the inner part. Now the smaller orifices, if you know, you know. So I'm taking my time because I don't want to ruin the actual stamping. I mean, I could lay this down too and, and do it there more better. More better. Okay, I think that's good. So let me just... 
shift you that way. And with the other end of the stick, you can, or with even the con stick, you can hold it down while you um, hit it with the heat gun. Okay, not too bad. I could have brushed off more of that powder, but you know. Now you see what not to do, but I think it's pretty cool. I like the little sparkles of the of um, that gold. So it's Journey. It's our next one. So we did Journey. Let's do Imagine. It's gonna look awesome. Now let's pick out some stamping for these. I have, see, this is kind of big. But maybe we could do part of it. Maybe just like that. Maybe for the center, or for one of the panels, that'd be good. Um, now, this is what I was gonna just refer to as the center. Um, so keep in mind, when you fold it up, oh, did I do it backwards? Yeah, usually the flap's over here, but you need a lefty. Anyway, that's okay. So this large panel is gonna be covered by the flap when it's closed. So what I like to do is just do a design here and then leave this, doesn't really need anything unless we have a design where it looks okay when it's half covered, I don't know. Um, I mean, we could do these, kind of stack them. Go with that. Um, the B work. We could do the B like it's flying off the page, but it's not. And so, really, you're just covering that part up. So, we could do that. And then. will go in the middle because when you close it the flap's going to go over that All right so remember this is our center one this can go on either side and for the next one what do i have let's see a b on that side what if we do a b let's do this b on this side yeah do we like that idea? Or do we like uh, this closed moth? I think that's too big. I I'm gonna stick with the bees. And then for our flap strip, what can we do there? Let's see. Oh, you know what? Since we started with this one, we can do you know, like one, two, three of these 
that would be really cool tied all together. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to start with the smaller ones because those are the most done. Okay. So, imagine Journey Forever. That's what we're doing. And I don't think I'm going to round the corners on these. I think I'll just leave these as is. And I'm just using uh, some glitter glue. Innards are done. Okay. Got some powder left all over from this mat. All right, and so we're gonna do, you know, I think we're gonna put you in the center because with the flap over it, that'll be, that'll be fine. Okay, so let's start with this little strip on the end. Make sure it fits, yep. Perfect, perfect. Now this paper is a little bit thinner. This is just regular copy paper. So it doesn't take much. Sorry if my head keeps popping into the shot there. Uh, straighten it up, straighten it up. Beautiful. So when we close this, we'll have this here. Yeah. I think that's better. So let's go ahead and glue that right out since we know where it's going. It's going right there. eyeballing it, you know, to get it centered. I usually 
actually works. Give it a good rub, make sure it's nice and smooth, and that the edges um, are, are glued down well. And then the bees. Um, while I'm doing this, let me tell you about these foam stamps. They are available at pmartist.com. And you can use my discount code to get 10% off. Um, and that's off your purchase of $35 or more USD. And it's Eddie Fan 10. That will get you 10% off. Let them know that I told you to go over there and I gave you that awesome discount. And they will take care of you for sure. Um, those wooden stamps I got on Etsy and I will link the, um, the shop for those in the description box as well. Um, yeah. And I don't think what other stamps would we use. Oh, just those, those two kinds. Perfect. So I just want to make sure I get you that info. And I don't know if you know this. I have several stamp designs in uh, the PM Artist Studio shop at the moment. I have two here I can show you. Um, the latest ones are snowflakes. And they're called snowflake kaleidoscopes. Um, they're a larger kind of, you can fit it in your hand like this, uh, stamp and they make really, really great designs. Um, and the way I designed it is you can use it any time of the year. It's not specifically a winter, you know, stamp or just snowflakes or just holiday, whatever. Um, you can use it for all sorts of stuff. Just gotta be creative, right? Um, let me show you two of the ones I have. This is my uh, Unraveling Squares, and this is my Cinco Circulos, five circles. These come in three inch and four inch. And then um, for those snowflakes, they're, um, like I said, there's three of them, three different designs. You can either buy an individual one, or you can buy all three as a set. And if you are watching this, before the end of December 31st. So um, if you're watching this before midnight, Central Time, December 31st, you will, if you spend $100 at PM Artist Studio, you'll receive four free stencils that are exclusive. Um, they're not available for purchase. Um, so yeah great time to shop it, it even um works if you buy yourself a hundred dollar gift card if you can't decide what you want right away or if you want to give a gift you buy yourself a hundred dollar gift card and with that purchase you will get four free stencils isn't that cool very very cool i will link their shop so you get all that and my discount code for when you buy product all right so now I can put ATCs in there. Let's see what I have that I can put in. So I've got one. That's gonna work, I don't know, let me see. And let's do this one here. Goes with the color very well. How about, no. This one would be cool, this has a lot cool texture on it. One, two, and then what's this one? No, 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 there was another one I thought would be cool. Let's look again on this other pile. Here we go. And this one has my stamp design embossed on it. Go and then you just fold it up, tie it up, and send it off. Let's see what we can tie it up with. All right, I found this piece of fabric that I dyed myself. I think it'll work. The only thing is, I need to, I think I'm gonna have it like that. So let's see, let me get this started. Ta da! Easy as that. Freestyle like 
this, do a little crisscross here, back over. Do -do -do -do. I should keep it even so I can get an even bow. That would be smart, Eddie. Actually, no, we want to start on the front, give it a little twisty, and then bring it back to the front, and I still get it too short, let's see. Okay, much better, that's what I'm talking about. Give it a bow, da 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 da. All right, how about that? Very cool ATC wallet, embossed and everything. And you're using extra, you're using gel prints. So if you got those extra papers, it's a great way to use them. So let's see, open it up, like that. You have your cards in there. We need a ticket for there, let's give it a ticket. Here's my tickets. Oh, cool, this one has a dragonfly stamp on it. That'd be very cool. Should tuck in right there. And then maybe, do I have any of these stickers that will go in there? We can put on the back side here. No, <laughs> these are a little cutesy, but I like them. They're very nice. Um, congratulations. Um, if you know their sign, there you go. You've got some. Here, let's do some flowers. There, we got flowered there. Let's do a purple one. There. And do, 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 do. this pink one right here. Just to give it, you know, something. Give it a little something, something. How about, let's see, do a couple stars. Put a star on here over the I or the J. Mm -hmm. Journey. What, if our, what about for behind the ticket there? Here, here's another ticket. Ticket over a ticket. This one says, you were born to shine. Fantastic. I'm gonna get a little, get a little paddle brush, a little tiny thing, and some ink and go around the edges. And uh, I think that'll be good. That'll be ready to go. You didn't think I was gonna leave these plain white, did ya? Come on, you don't know me. Beautiful. That's good to go, yeah? Okay, and then put that back, back in. Get out of the way for now. Have our ATCs. These are all ATCs that I made. I made some on video. These were made on video, I believe. Not sure about that one. And then we have our bees and our flowers. We close her up. Since this loop is already looped, let's just Slip it on, tie it up. All right. This
this was a fun project, wasn't it? And what I found, um, what I've learned doing this is do these things in batches. You don't have to do it all in one one go. You can, uh, since I'll, I'll, give you the, I'll be giving you the measurements, you can go ahead and um, pre-cut these like I did here. Pre-cut them and pre-score them. And they lay flat, so it's easy to store. And then you can cut your gel print pieces or whatever you want to use to decorate in these sections because you already know the measurements. You have those ready to go. You can even go ahead and emboss them and have those ready. And same for the panels back here. Have those cut up, pre-cut, you know. And then another day you could sew your wallets and then another day you could glue all your stuff and then another day you can embellish or add, you know, your closure. But, you know, if you do things, different elements ahead of time, you can just sit down with all your elements and bam, knock a bunch out, especially when you have a bunch of swaps, you know, and you want to get them out in the mail. Um, so yeah, I think that's, um, that's fun. Coordinate them as much as you want. You don't have to. I try a little bit, um, but do something different, you know? Make it your own. Make it special so that person receiving it feels special. So thanks so much for joining me today. We did a lot. And I hope you learned something. I don't know. And um, yeah, it's going to be a good new year. So celebrate safely. And a reminder, I am participating in this year's Streamathon. I'll be streaming at on January 1st, 2024 at 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. I'm doing, it's a rare live stream for me. So uh, go to my list of videos on my channel. And if you click on my live tab, you'll see there's a video, um, a live stream scheduled and you'll see my big old pretty face on there. And um, if you go to that video, you can hit the notification button and it will let you know when I'm gonna go live. So thank you so much. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next year. Bye everyone.